Welcome to First Southern. We are so glad you're here for our last message of the year. Uh, now, if you would like to connect with us this morning, go over to the chat section of the uh, page you're on and drop us a good morning or hello uh, and let us know that you're here. Uh, we have people standing by that would love to talk with you and answer questions. Uh, and I think you'll benefit out of uh, the conversation that we're going to be having uh, later on in today's message. So go ahead and drop us a good morning or hello. Now, if you're new to First Southern, you've never connected with us, or maybe you're new to connecting with us, if you would like more information or you would like a pastor to reach out to you, uh, what I would ask you to do is type the, uh, uh, text the word connects to 94000. That's the word connects to 94000. Now, I hope that through today's worship and prayer and message that you grow further in your relationship with Jesus. And now will you join me as we go to the Lord and worship?
What an amazing time of worship. Uh, I was blessed by it and I hope you were as well. And now we're going to transition into worshiping the Lord through prayer. And so will you join me as we pray for 2020 and for the upcoming year 2021. Join me in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much. We thank you for how you've blessed us. We thank you for how you guide us and direct us. We thank you for who you are, that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are perfect uh, in all your ways. You are all knowing, you are almighty, you are unchanging, and you are loving and gracious to us. And Lord, we thank you so much for that. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus and for the life that he led, for the sinless life that he went through, the teachings that he gave us, the death and resurrection that he was willing to sacrifice so that we could be saved from our sins. So Lord, we thank you for that this morning. In light of his death and resurrection, we also pray for your forgiveness this morning. We pray that you would forgive us of our sins, help us to be a forgiving people out of the abundance of forgiveness that we've received Received, that we would be abundant with the forgiveness that we give. So help us to be a forgiving people. And Lord, we thank you, uh, despite all of the roller coaster ups and downs of 2020, we thank you for it. Lord, we know that this has been a trying year. This has been a difficult year and many have suffered. Many have gone through very difficult times. Uh, we have lost loved ones. Uh, we've lost church members. Um, and Lord, we mourn that loss. But Lord, we also recognize the ways that you've moved in this past year. And Lord, we pray for this upcoming year. We pray for 2021. And we pray that you would continue to guide us and direct us in all that we do as a church and as individuals. Help us to follow your direction. And Lord, help us to continually lean on you for everything for this upcoming year. We know that, that this difficult time can be trying and it can uh, cause us to lose hope. But Lord, we pray that as in keeping our eyes on you that we would keep our hope, that we would keep in mind that no matter how bad things get, that we always have you. And in that, we pray that knowing we have you would bring us joy. So Lord, we pray for hope. We pray for comfort and we pray for joy. And we pray most of all that you would lead us to lead every generation to the life-changing hope of Jesus this coming year. Lord, that you would convict us to have conversations with people about you, that you would use us and the godly lives that we live to show people the love of Jesus, that we would be a light in this world of darkness. So Lord, guide us and use us in this coming year. And we thank you so much. We pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to First Southern. We're glad that you're here with us today. And I want to introduce uh, two of our pastors. This is Pastor Josh, our executive pastor, and Pastor Keith, our associate pastor. Um, and we thought that it would be great this morning to talk about this past year and also uh, talk about what we're looking forward to this next year. Now, Obviously, 2020 has been a year for the record books. Uh, most of us have been affected in one way or the other. Many have gotten sick, uh, many have dealt with loss, but there has also been so many things that God has blessed us with uh, over this past year. And so well, I wanna take a moment and just highlight some of the amazing works of God that have taken place here at First Southern in 2020. Now I'm gonna read off of my uh, tablet this morning because there's just so many amazing things that God has done. So what has God done in First Southern over the last year? We have been able to give almost $40,000 to our local community and churches who are in need throughout the state of Arizona. That's $40,000 that have gone to feed people, to help churches stay open, to, to provide medical uh, needs for our community. Uh, that's amazing. We were also able to give hundreds of masks to uh, our local medical community. Um, we've given over 
three tons of food, cleaning supplies, and hygiene supplies uh, to the local food bank here in Scottsdale uh, to meet those needs. Uh, we've also given 60 sleeping bags uh, to homeless in our community. Uh, we know of four people that have gotten saved uh, through our online and in-person services here at First Southern, and we've also baptized five people uh, this year. Uh, we've had several new families uh, come and join us, and we have had 12 people uh, join our church. Uh, we've partnered with Christian Challenge this year, uh, which is our, our local Arizona uh, collegiate ministry, uh, so that we can begin a Christian ministry over at Scottsdale uh, Community College. Um, our Bible studies have been growing. They've been growing so much that we had to increase our budget for 2021 so that we could buy more curriculum materials. And that's such a blessing. Uh, in tied to that, we launched a new young adult ministry, a young adult small group, which has been thriving and meeting the needs of our college students and young adults. Um, our different ministries have gotten very creative with how to do online ministry and uh, COVID safe ministry uh, between uh, choir pieces that have been virtual to vacation Bible school that was all online and our trunk or treat event uh, that we did uh, on Halloween weekend. Uh, our ministries have gone outside of the box to continue uh, to lead people to the life changing hope of Jesus. Um, we also began a new homeless ministry uh, here at the church. Every Thursday, our fellowship hall gets opened up so that homeless people uh, can come and find rest from the uh, outside weather. They are uh, receiving medical attention and mental health uh, uh, services, as well as city services uh, to help meet their needs. And there will be uh, a new way to serve here at the church through that amazing ministry ministry. Uh, and now I want to kind of turn uh, the focus to what God's been doing in our own life uh, as pastors. So what has God taught you uh, in 2020? So Keith, why don't we start with you? What has God taught you? What has he done with you over this past year? <sighs> well, I've never, I've never had a year like 2020. And I would say more than anything, I learned to value things more than I had before. Um, I, I've always loved the role of the church in my life, and I always knew that, that it had a large role. But I had no idea how huge of a role it really did play. And the opportunity to worship, I've been worshiping on Sunday mornings ever since I could remember. So probably for 61 years, I've been able to worship every Sunday. And then to have it taken from me, uh, I just realized what value it, it has in my life. Uh, not just the worship aspect, but the aspect of fellowship uh, with, with believers. Uh, Chad, I, I visit with you. I, I went through a time of uh, pretty much depression. Uh, for several weeks because the things that I love to do, the things that I'm called to do uh, were taken from me. I wasn't able to, uh, to prepare for worship. I wasn't able to lead worship. I, I wasn't able to rehearse with the people that I love to, to present an offering that is pleasing and acceptable. Uh, I couldn't make hospital visits. I couldn't do the passion play. I couldn't rehearse with the people for the passion play. I couldn't work hard with those people. Everything that I love to do in ministry ministry was pretty much taken away. I couldn't make hospital visits. I couldn't make home visits. Yeah. Uh, so I went through a really difficult time. And finally, Kathy had to grab me by my <laughs> collar and say, you got to get out of this. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> but uh, the Lord gradually uh, brought me to a point where I could see the opportunities of ministry even in this confining environment. And as those opportunities came, I became to, uh, to be more rejuvenated and, and felt fresh, really a, a kind of a freshness in ministry. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. But it was very, very challenging for sure. Yeah. I think for me, 2020 has been defined by foster care ministry for us. You know, Jana and I 
uh, decided early on in our marriage that we wanted to foster children. That was something we had a passion for. Um, and so we got that process started. And through 2020, we've had four different children in our house uh, of varying ages. Um, and of course, right now we have two foster kids. Uh, we have a uh, seven week old and we have a 14 month old um, and they're brothers. And so we're caring for these lovely, beautiful little children. And uh, we're hoping and praying that God will open the door for us to adopt these two kids. We'll wait and see what happens. Um, and so we're interested to see. Um, but I've also uh, felt some of the same things that you have felt over this past year, the roller coaster of you know, I was so excited about entering 2020. You know, in January, I thought 2020 was going to be this great year of evangelism and community involvement and making a difference uh, through First Southern. And then everything got shut down. And the discouragement that I felt coming out of that was, was very difficult. But then to see how God was moving in the lives of our church and its people, despite being closed to in-person services, we were still reaching people, we were still baptizing people, uh, we were still making a huge difference in our community and people were noticing that. Um, so it was very much this roller coaster of uh, encouragement and discouragement and encouragement and discouragement. Um, and then dealing with all of that and dealing with the fear uh, that I felt deep inside about, well, what are people going to think by us closing or reopening because I, I've kind of felt a season of uh, no matter what we did, you couldn't make people happy. It was, it was a season where if we opened too soon, people were upset. If we, we closed too soon, people were upset. But um, luckily, and, and I feel blessed in this, uh, our church has responded with such graciousness, with such understanding and empathy for the difficult position that our leadership has been in. Um, and so ultimately, I think in summation, 2020 has been a huge encouragement. We've seen our church family come together and stay strong and lead others to that life-changing hope of Jesus. So um, overall, I think it's been very encouraging to see that. Yeah, for me, it's a... Uh it's very similar to what, what Chad and Key said, you know, there's the roller coaster ups and downs of, of excitements and highs. And then all of a sudden everything starts going, feel like nothing's changing and nothing's moving. Um, and so you kind of get down and you, you do struggle with worry and doubt and, uh, and depression does creep in. And, um, and it's ironic. Um, I was actually encouraged by uh, one of those coffee mug verses uh, those that, you know, it's Jeremiah 29, 11. I saw it on a bumper sticker behind this car and, uh, and I'll read it for us. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And, uh, and it was in this verse that I kind of laughed because what people forget is that the Israelites were in slavery. Mm -hmm. They were in bondage and they had 70 more years of, as slaves and exiles away from their home. Um, this was supposed to be an encouraging verse for them, but they're in a terrible time. And, uh, and so when God shared this verse and just brought it to my attention, it was just reminding of his faithfulness. Uh, faithfulness in the small things of going to the grocery store and finding a, a package of toilet paper uh, because we're about to run out with all you know, everybody in our house. Um, faithfulness of, of schools being able to open back up and, and be able to allow um, our kids to be able to have that. Um, small things where our kids finally actually found friends during uh, the quarantine and during the shutdown. We found out there's kids in our neighborhood and has opened up uh, gospel opportunities. And so um, in those moments where I've been prone to, to worry and to doubt and to have concern, um, God just reminded me that I, I am faithful. I, I have a plan. I have a future. Uh, this didn't catch me off guard. I, I'm still working. And, and as you shared, Chad, we, God's been doing great things in and through for Southern. Um, but I've been trying to uh, combat my depression and worry and doubt uh, with fixating on his faithfulness just in our family, uh, just allowing our times. Um, uh, unlike you two, uh, my family stayed healthy. And, uh, and so that's been a blessing. Um, <laughs> and uh, as Keith coughs, that's wonderful. And uh, <laughs> that, way. that way, thank you. Uh, but yeah, it's just been great to see um, all that God has done. And um, and again, doesn't mean there hasn't been days of hardship. There hasn't been days of like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do next? Um, 
but we combat that by, as Kathy encouraged you, Keith, you know, just to stop it. We, we have to stop it. Encourage <laughs> wasn't the word. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that's what he's taught, taught me the most, is just his faithfulness, even in the small things. Amen. So we asked and answered the question, what did God do in 2020? And now I want to look forward. Let, let's look at what do you see God doing in your life and in your ministry for 2021? So Josh, go ahead and start us out with that question. I think God's going to continue to do what he, he's always done and he's you know, been doing in this past year. Um, I think he's going to be faithful. I think he's going to be faithful in the small things. You know, we saw God do so many great things um, in the confines of this pandemic uh, this past year in the life of the church and the life of my own family. Um, I'm anticipating God to continue. I'm anticipating God's going to continue to open doors for gospel opportunities in our neighborhood. Um, you know, as we're building more and more friendships there, um, mm -hmm. gospel opportunities at the kids' schools up here at church. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, with our partnership with the city for um, the homeless relief center that we have on Thursdays and the volunteer ministry opportunities that we have with that. Um, I'm excited about what Paige is doing with kids ministry and, and, and trying to relaunch uh, kids church and make that an exciting and investing time to disciple kids and to partner more with parents. Um, I think the doors are wide open of what God's able to do in and through us. Um, and again, I think he's just going to be faithful. He always has been, always will be uh, faithful to us. Yeah. Keith, what are your thoughts of where God's going for you personally and ministerially in 2021? I think 2021 is different than any other year because I really don't have a clue. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite so. But in most years, I pretty much have mapped out the ministry calendar and I know pretty much what we're going to do. And, and there's some flexibility there. But 2021 is very, very different. I, I think of uh, sent Chronicles with King Jehoshaphat and he gets word that there are three armies that are converging that are going to destroy him and so he calls everybody together and they're having this prayer time and he just looks up and he says God we don't know what to do but our eyes are on you yeah. and that pretty much is is my mindset in going into 2021 <laughs> yeah. because all of the plans we had for 2020 were just pretty much nixed. Yeah. And so I'm hesitant to make hard plans because of all the preparation you have to make to get to that point and then to scratch them at the last minute is pretty tough. But things like, uh, for me, the passion play is a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but for us to be able to present the passion play in April, we have to begin preparations in January. Yeah. Well, there's no way that we'll be able to rehearse in January. There's yeah. probably no way we'll be able to rehearse in February. So that puts it on me to plan accordingly where perhaps we may be able to rehearse a bit in March. And so that means we just have to change up the thing. And so flexibility, uh, being uh, very fluid with, with all the plans. But at the same time, like Jehoshaphat, we just have our eyes on the Lord. You know, Lord, what do you have for me today? What do you have for me this week? What do you have for me this month? How is this going to change? What we need to 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 flex to make it work in this setting. Yeah. Um, so that's a very vague answer. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, I don't think you can go into any specifics given the, the continual change no. that we seem to be going through no. uh, over the past several months. You know, for me personally, um, 2021 holds the excitement of the possibility of us adopting those two boys. Yeah. Um, and so we're closely monitoring what the courts are doing and we're hoping that we'll be able to adopt them um, and see what God does in that. Uh, but that's kind of on the personal end, that's, that's kind of what's consuming our, our looking forward is, is what happens with these two little boys. Uh, ministry wise, um, I'm with you guys. Um, there is a lot of uncertainty, but at the same time, I have a lot of hope uh, mm. as to what God is doing. We, we've seen that God will continue to move no matter what is going on in the world around us. And with this new homeless ministry, the, the Day Relief Center that we're hosting here on Thursdays, I'm excited to see what God's gonna do with that and the opportunities for our own uh, church family to be able to serve and love on those people. Uh, but also uh, this new college ministry at, at uh, Scottsdale Community College to, to be able to get in the door there. I, I'm with you, I'm excited to see what Paige has been doing with our 
our children's ministry and the ideas that she has moving forward. I love what Jake has been doing with our students um, and how he has gotten outside the box and has done some very, very creative uh, ministries and activities uh, that were still safe, but 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 offered our students an opportunity to worship and and uh, grow in Christ. Um, I'm excited for what Justin's going to be doing with our young adults yeah. and to see what he's doing there. Uh, I'm so excited about that. So there's a lot to, I guess, for me to look forward to. A lot of uncertainty, but a lot of hope um, at the same time. And so now I want to kind of turn the question that we just answered, that question of what is God doing in our lives for 2021? And I want to pose that question to you this morning. I want you to sit down. I want all of us to sit down and think about what does 2021 have in store for you? What does God want to do in your life this next year. So if you've got a Bible, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're going to read a passage out of Romans chapter 5 um, today. But <clears throat> what direction is God leading you toward? And what can you do to fall in line with God's plan and purpose for your life? You know, obviously, we're having to do things differently. Um, and 2021 is going to continue some of that trend. And of course, some things are probably going to change uh, as we go through 2021. So how can you know what God is directing you to do and where he's directing you to go over this next year with so much uncertainty? Well, let's look at Romans chapter 5. We're going to begin in verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says this. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in in our sufferings. Did you catch that? We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Verse 4, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love <clears throat> has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, Romans chapter 5 addresses pretty much everything that we've experienced in 2020 and that we're looking forward to in 2021. So how can you know what God is leading you to do in 2021? Well, I think that question can best be answered by looking at our mission and our four values here at First Southern. Now, our mission is to lead every generation to the life-changing hope of Jesus. So we exist to lead people to that life-changing hope of Jesus. But we accomplish that mission through our four values. Our four values are believe, grow, connect, and serve. And so I want us to think about those four values this morning. Believe is the first of those four values. I want each and every one of us, if you're watching, if you're listening, I want you to be very intentional this coming year to listen to God's word, to, to read God's word, to study God's word, and to grow in that so that his teaching can change you from the inside out, which leads us to the second value, which is grow. Growing means that we allow God to change us, to make us more like him. Now, if you're struggling in this season, if you've gone through difficult times or you begin to go through difficult times, growing means that you accept the resources and the people that ha God has around you so that you can change to be more like him. You see, if we look back at Romans chapter five, we know that suffering leads to endurance and that endurance leads to character and that character leads to hope. And we, if we want that hope in those difficult times, 
We have to accept the suffering that we're going through. And so in order to grow in him, sometimes that means that you've got to go through the struggle. You've got to go through that difficult time. And if you're going through a difficult time, please reach out to us. Reach out to someone, whether it's us or some godly man or woman in your life, and ask them to walk with you. Get advice from them. Uh, gain wisdom from them during your difficult time. So believe, grow. The third one is connect. And I alluded to connection a little bit in the grow section, but I would encourage each and every one of you to be connected to a group. Uh, we have lots of online groups here at First Southern and you would be benefited if you would connect to one of those groups so that you can live life alongside other believers and, and in conversations and living life together, going back to our previous value, you can grow more in Jesus. Um, we're, we've also got opportunities to connect with our community, which leads me to our last of our four values, which is serve. Uh, we're going to have more opportunities this coming year to serve God uh, through our Day Relief Center uh, ministry that meets on Thursdays. We're going to have opportunities to serve in that ministries. Uh, we are looking forward to new ministry opportunities here in the city uh, and with our schools. And so we're going to have new opportunities to serve. But we've got our existing ways to serve. We've got children's ministry, a music ministry, worship ministry, student ministry, our new young adult ministry that will be moving over to Scottsdale Community College. There are so many opportunities uh, to serve others. And many of you serve one another through uh, mentoring and, and having conversations with one another. Uh, but ultimately, if you can find ways to strengthen your belief in Jesus, to grow in him, uh, to connect with other believers in the community and to serve others in the name of Jesus, that can accomplish your mission. That can give you direction for 2021. So look at the ways that God has led you up through this point. Look at the ways that he has gifted you and the passions that he's given you in order to search out what God's direction may be for you for 2021. Uh, my encouragement for you uh, in closing is this. Don't let 2021 just pass you by. You know, 2020 was a difficult season for everyone. 2020 uh, was a season of adjusting and adapting to the changes that were happening in our culture. And in many ways, things are still changing, but in many ways, we've begun to figure out how to do ministry in this new season. And so I would encourage each and every one of you watching and listening today, don't let 2021 just pass you by. Find ways to make a difference for Jesus, whether it be in your own life, in the lives of the people around you, in your community, or here at the church, find ways to connect and grow and plug in and serve through your beliefs in Jesus so that you can make a real difference in the lives of others and maybe even in your own life for 2021. So will you join me as we pray? Almighty God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here online this morning. And Lord, we pray for this coming year. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, that you would guide us and direct us so that we can lead every generation to the life-changing hope of Jesus. That we would not sit back uh, and be a victim in this difficult time, but instead we would be actively looking for ways to believe in you more, to grow in our belief in you, to actively grow in you, to, to allow you to change us, to be the man or the woman of God that you've called us to be, to connect more to others and to our community so that we can make a difference in our lives and in the lives of others. And lastly, serve so that we can serve others, so that others may know you so that we can make a difference. We could be the light in this world of darkness. So Lord, I pray in the next coming days and weeks and months that you would open our eyes to the ways that you call us to actively pursue you and serve you in this coming year. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all of this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us here today at First Southern. We're so glad that you took time out of your day today and you spent it here with us. Now again, if you would like to connect with us or like a pastor to reach out to you this week, type the word connect connects and text it to 94000. There's a lot going on here at the church and so we want to update you on a few things. Obviously it's the end of the year and so uh, this is the last week uh, for you to donate towards the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, uh, every year about this time of year uh, we take up an offering called the Lottie Moon Christmas offering and every penny that's given towards this offering goes directly to into the hands of international missionaries uh, that are all around the world that are working to lead people to Jesus. And so this is the last week that you can give towards that mission offering. Also, if you want your donations uh, to be uh, accounted to 2020 for tax purposes, those must be postmarked and dated by December 31st. And so please make sure that you either go online uh, and click on our giving portal or you get the those donations postmarked by December 31st in order for them to go on the 2020 uh, tax season. So this is your last week to do that. Now again, we're so glad that you joined us this week. We hope that through worship and the prayer and the message today that God has touched your life and spoken to you. And, and through this all, we pray that you would stay safe, that you would stay connected, and that you would stay founded in your faith. God bless and have a happy new year.